كامل مساء الخير يعطيك العافيه جميعا ربنا يخليك يا Uh, Professor Dr. Kevin Mahadeen of MK Associates, this is your Canadian architect. Landscape architect, professor, author, and author. He was the chief commissioner of the Aqaba Special Economic Zone Authority and was a Jordanian senator at the House of Senate. Currently, he is a full professor at the College of Architecture and Design at the American University of Malaga in Georgia. Uh, Kamil motivates with words, with landscape design, and inspires with activity, artistically. After earning his bachelor, master's, and doctoral degree in the U.S., he returned to his homeland to found the first landscape architecture firm in Jordan in 1987. Among his many leadership positions, in January 1997, he became director general to Petra Regional Council and in 1999 took the portfolio as a minister of water and irrigation. Moreover, Dr. Mahadeen was the chair of architecture department at the University of Jordan, the coordinator of the Arakan unit of for Islamic studies for five years, and he was a consultant to the Hashimi Project Board. In October 2017, uh, Dr. Kamel was the first Arab to be awarded the ASLA American Society of Landscape Architects Fellowship. Dr. Mahadeen received an, his nomination for service for the Council of Fellows Executive Committee. His talk today is about cities without boundaries, the human dimension. Will you please start, Dr. Mahadeen? Thank you all. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity and thank all the organization, organization team for this uh, conference. Uh, it comes in a due time. Shukr la kulit al handasa bi jamiat October lil ulum al haditha wal adab. Tahiyati lakum fi fi Masr. Salamun lakum, salamun minkum. Greetings to all. I will try uh, my best to give this speech in English. Sometimes I will touch on some Arabic uh, uh, phrases and mix both. But when we talk about cities uh, and how we make them resilient and how we make it sustainable as such, I'd like to look at uh, my practice in the Mediterranean. I think uh, the essence uh, is the centella to design. Uh, the co-host with me is now architect Yezan Mahadeen. He is a graduate of Cairo University. And I would like to take you through some of what I think, what makes cities resilience what makes cities uh, what makes us as architects and planners and designers we think we design places we don't design places we don't plan plan places people design places uh, and uh, four, four four rules i had in my life the harder i work the luckier i get and uh, i think traveling is an indus encyclopedia of knowledge uh, read if you want to lead, and this is something we have been losing in the Arab world and the Mediterranean, the southern Mediterranean. We're not reading anymore, and mostly architects are just looking at images. And if want, if you want to reach, uh, 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 you have to reach before you teach. You have to reach the people uh, and look into uh, what uh, comes uh, into our world next. And all what I have found out that reading and uh, cities, what makes cities work? What makes people rich? What makes the culture rich? We live in the South and North, South Mediterranean. We have the North Mediterranean. We share about 10 civilizations from the pharaohs of Egypt till our recent civilizations of the Ottoman Empire coming through the Fatimid and the late uh, Mamluks and the Umayyads and the Abbasids. But when you look at all these cities, what makes these cities is the aroma, which is a missing subject all over. What do we mean by the aroma? The aroma, the scale, the color, the culture, the smell, uh, the, 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 the finesse, the 
people walk into respecting the climatic responses and that what makes these cities especially the shoreline of the mediterraneans coming from uh, southern spain southern france italy southern greece uh, uh, western uh, turkey and then we look at sicily uh, sardinia malta and then you're coming out to palestine lebanon palestine syria and then egypt the shoreline of egypt going to libya and tunisia and you look at the complexity and the finesse and the simplicity of how people deal with their spaces and look at the human scale and the human dimension you find it in every design you find it in every pocket they make their space personal over the last 100 years we start missing and we're losing it in the huge cities and we'll come and look at a few examples as we see it whether it's in the western world this is my hometown in karak in the southern portion of jordan and the lower two pictures are my old house which has been built about 100 years by my grandfather when you look at the castles and the crusaders castles and uh, this is where saladin uh, salahuddin came into the karak castle and uh, regained it and re-established uh, his you can find that those cities and those villages when people were designing they were using simple forms uh, reading uh, uh, their landscape addressing landscape issues protecting the nature we're not protecting the nature anymore now we are in the corona crisis now we have been for the last six months facing a new wave of uh, uh, of uh, uh, this corona cycle which is an endless it looks like we have to come back reshaping our towns reshaping our cities this is a site in petra in the south we have to reshape our cities and our villages and our homes we have to come back to the supermarkets we have to group our thinking and recreate the places of small farms and slow people and bringing not nature and there is a mistake when we say uh, we well, i'm designed with nature no you have to bring the climatic comfort into your house you have to plant your rooftops you have to address the issues of water we have failed as architects we have failed as designers and why is he traveling because for the last 40 years i spent 40 50 percent of what i make and my time in traveling within the mediterranean i have designed more 1000 projects from morocco within the mediterranean up to iraq and the gulf and uh, even in some european countries i sketch i travel i document these are sketches i read these places i understand as well as i let my students work through hand and pencil that's why i have to reach to the heart of our students we are getting too harsh on our students with the new medias that we are facing how we can make our cities resilient when i was i was in charge in akaba 2012 we received the resilience medal of that town from the united nation and undp and all those people why because we kept it clean we didn't as government or employees kept it clean the people keeps the place clean not the government that's why education and women is in charge our mothers and daughters and sisters the ones they raise us how to keep ourselves and how to keep our towns and spaces clean and crisp and that's why i think when we start thinking about making cities we have to look about equal opportunities among all unfortunately all over the world we talk about equal opportunities look what's taking place in the states in europe and the arab world we breach about something but we don't do it please next that's why when we talk about the aroma of the mediterranean we talk about the cities we up till now three favorite cities in my life cairo is one of them next is uh, uh, rome and then istanbul because in these three cities the aroma of the people and the cycle of how people maneuver or make their spaces tight unique and that's how they make it survive they don't do a, a lot of damage in the old sectors of these towns now we are moving fast we want to make the cars happy we should make people pedestrians happy that's why in european countries they make the lanes smaller they make the cars unhappy and they make people happy that's why you see a lot of vendors in the streets and you find in cairo or in amman or in akaba or big cities and that's why you start taking the vendors out keep them out 
keep, no, you should let the people deal with their spaces, of course, according to basic guidelines, but at least give them the freedom to move in and out. I had the pleasure at one time in Aqaba of not taking these small kiosks and those other ladies selling small fruits here, parsley, bagdunis, khas, whatever it is, I used on Fridays to love to see those people and elderly people. But you look at the big cities, you look at Dallas, Fort Worth, huge spaces, nice landscapes, but with all due respect, after seven o'clock, you don't find people walking down the streets. But go to the Grand uh, Bazaar in, in uh, what you call it in Istanbul. Go to Piazza uh, 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 Fontana Titrevi or Piazza Navona or go to uh, those uh, downtown Amman or go to downtown Wadi Musa and Petra. You'll find people mingling and talking and enriching their life. We have failed. We created nice landscapes. I am an architect. I'm a landscape architect. I have been practicing 70% of my practice landscape architecture. Nice landscapes, nice water features. But 90% or 80%, 70% are empty of places. Another one of my favorite is Malta. If you look at Malta and you look at the people at Valletta and you see how people move into these places or Sicily or Sardinia, those small islands, how people create the finesse and the story uh, teller. You, we make, you want to make your cities religions. It's not only, we are not respecting uh, the microclimates. In Jordan, we have four microclimates. In each microclimate, we have our own plants. Uh, the South is different than the Hamada region, than the Jordan Valley. The same in Egypt, the upper Egypt, the lower Egypt. We have missed uh, we teach history. We teach history classes to understand how the pharaohs work. But it's one course. And we teach in that course the six or nine civilizations within our lifetime. While we should focus on some of these civilizations because there is a lot of richness for us to be educated. Actually, I would like also to touch on the way how we deal with our educational systems nowadays. We moving into computers and AutoCADs. And for the last uh, 30 years, though I deal with AutoCADs and I have it in my office and practice, but up till now, I don't present anything to my clients without my hand drawings or my team drawings. And I focus on model making. We are moving to teach our students. We don't reach to their hearts. We don't teach them anymore. We should teach them ethics, how to be good architects, how to stand in front of clients and say no. And most of the times, if I want to be a planner, I had the pleasure of being a politician. And most of the time, politicians, we fail our people. But the nice thing, because of my background in architecture, I always use a bulletproof vest. Unfortunately, our leaders, I mean, our prime ministers or ministers, they don't wear these uh, bulletproof vests. They need professors. They need socialists. They need... Uh, uh, archaeologists, they need uh, journalists to be around them when they talk about planning cities. And if you look at architects, we've been teaching about who are the magnificent sevens from the late Zaha Hadid, God bless her soul, or to Peter Eisman, but we forget that there is a lot of young architects coming in our part of the world. I just, usually I ask some of our architects students, uh, name five uh, Arab architects. They hardly can find one. It's not Abdul Wahid al Wakil or Abdul Halim Ibrahim or Hassan Fathi or Rifat al Shadirji or Jafar Tokan or Rasim Badran. There's a lot of good architects in our part of the world. And the yuppies, the 40s and the 50s, we're not opening our minds to understand what those young architects are doing in, uh, in France, in Spain. Only we know Tado Ando and we know some good planners. But uh, uh, I think Ali, uh, uh, there is a, uh, an Egyptian professor, correct me, he's 86, 87, God bless him. I hope he will be Ali Rafat or something. I think he's still teaching at uh, Cairo University. I saw him going into the class. I was impressed when I saw in 2009 and 10, I walked into the College of Architecture at Cairo University, seeing that six or seven professors enter and get out. They stay with the students. 
essence of the place. Next. When you talk about essence, you have to understand that Reggio Calabria, when we had that competition in dealing with, we didn't win it, Zaha Hadid won that competition. We were with six or seven Italian architects. But to understand that space, you have to understand the culture, the people, the movement, next. And you have to keep on circling what makes cities. You cannot measure cities within 10 or 20 years. Unfortunately, we lost some of our cities. Teamwork, we're losing some parts of Cairo. We're losing some parts of Amman. We're losing or we lost half of Damascus or Baghdad. We're losing these crisp cities. But there are cities, you go downtown Rome, you still find downtown Rome. And downtown Paris, you still find it rich. Historic preservation, keeping the essence of that place. And that's why working by my hand with my team and creating a six or seven specialists around you, that's what makes your project or your life successful. People will tell me most of the time, how you can make it? I said, well, if you work hard on yourself with a group of people, and when you had the chance to develop Dream Island in Abu Dhabi, you have to do it with passion. We're not designing anymore with passion. We're designing for commercial activities. We're designing cities or we're helping cities to make money more or less, at least. I'm not trying to exaggerate, but we lost that finesse of using our hands and minds and passion. Next, next. I will not, I didn't ask you how much time I have. I believe I have 15 minutes or 20 minutes, but we as architects in the Arab world, we think architects can design, any architect could design skyscrapers, airports. We are a jack of all trades, a master of none, but in the West or in Europe, you find architects, landscape architects, interior designers, graphic designers, specialists. And when somebody asked me, can you design a hospital? I said, yes. Can you design an airport? Yes, I can. While your office has about four people or six or 10. No, you can't. You have to build cities from within your houses or your districts. The more greenery you have, even if it's a small pocket, you have to understand what is the difference between evergreen trees and deciduous trees. You have to create niches. This is my small, simple house in a, an officer's district in Amman. It's not more than 300 square meters on about with a setback landscapes. Next, use local materials. This is how you build cities from the house. And that's why you find in some parts of Sidi Bousi, in some parts of Cairo, in some parts of Lebanon, you find some of these niches up on the mountains and you love those spaces. That's what makes a city or a village or a town rich. They keep, the, there is nostalgia. Next, using color of the Mediterranean, using understanding the value of what you have as, a, as available material. Next, all of that should come in hand. Next. Next, sometimes we do examples, and sometimes <laughs> architecture is in the details. Less is more. Even in cities, we try to make fancy roads, fancy highways. I know we need to do circulations. I have to move from one spot to another spot. But look at what the corona did. Empty cities, dry landscapes. Next, we have to go back and look at what Hassan Fethi did. Look what those, from we saw Wasif, what he did. Look at some what Ja'far Tuqan of Jordan, God bless his soul. Look at Rasim Badran, Shari Naim. Look at some of our architects and Rifat Jadirji, what he did. Our kids now are fancy with those magnificent waves of lines and creating camouflage by the computers, creating spaces and skyscrapers that when Corona hits, shutdowns took place we lost everything except your inner house and inner yourself next inner soul next next richness in every detail the more we focus on using our environment for our advantage plant cucumbers plant as much as you can around your house you'll find it next Harvest, water harvesting, it's a key issue. Next, 
designs. All what I have, what I have shown you late the last few slides on my design. This is the most, most, uh, most, uh, this is uh, the tomb of uh, of the late uh, President Yasser Arafat, the architect Jafar Tokana, and the landscape architect. Next, you have to understand that even within the marinas or the shoreline of the Mediterranean, there is a human scale that it's missing in some of the cities. Next. Next, next, next. Of course, we fancy good architecture, large scale, huge scale. Next, love to design towers, love to design huge building, next. But in most of these cases, they are empty, empty soul. They are high tech, soft, smart cities. Even we create resorts. We mock up resorts in Ghardaqa, in Aqaba, in uh, Sharm el-Sheikh, in the Mediterranean, but we cannot beat, next, we can't beat Sidi Bou Said. We cannot beat uh, uh, Greek islands. Why? Because they are old cities and villages and they're built for sustainability. Next. Actually, I found out that most of the time we love to knock trees. This is one of the resorts I designed in the South. Uh, of Aqaba about 20 years ago. Next. The same at night. Next. Street landscaping. Missing notion. All landscaping is missing. Even interior design, which is interior architecture, we, we have interior decorators. We have plant pushers. They are the landscape designers. interior architects. The planners, architects, though we have good planners in some of the Arab towns and cities. I think in Cairo we do, but are we using them? Are we using them in Amman? Look to this specific small example. This is a design by Yazan Mahadeen with two of his colleagues. It's Memphis Catholic School Yard. It's about 500 or 600 maybe square meters. Simple material built and designed by a national competition. When we want to design something, we over-exaggerate. We'd like to put all our muscles in a design to make a city happen. I don't know why their spaces look nice. Ours, sometimes they don't. Even the streets, next. Because I will tell you something. The street does not belong to us. One small item at the end. When I started my work in MK Associates as a landscape architect, I spent also 30 years in academia and still. 50% in academia and 50%. I hope you go back to that last time. Five years ago, I expanded my company. I built 10 hospitals. I supervised, designed, supervised, and project managed 10 hospitals in Iraq with a Turkish contractor. I expanded the firm to about 200 employees. I lost the passion and I lost the scale and I lost even creating good spaces. And that's why when you look at those magnificent sevens or tens and the good names in architecture, Look at their work. The smaller and the petite they have designed when they start going into commercialism, they lost the space and they lost the sense of the scale and they lost the aroma. And that's why some of my favorite sacred places are Abdul Wahid al Wakil, small mosques on Jeddah's coastal lines. This is where you find the finesse and the aroma. Preserve. If you want to make a city to be resilient, this is my old house grandfather's house in Karak. Preserve it. Next. Keep it. Color it. Don't even throw anything. Next. Recycle it. And if you want to design, design with sections, design with the environment. Look at cities from an urban planning point of view. Create parks. I don't know why we don't have parks. In 1938, Cairo used to have one of the best gardens in the world next also to Algiers. Now we don't, next. We don't, people don't go. Though Al-Azhar Park is one unique space to make a city resilient because they took a dumb ground and they made it to be a national park that it's a pride of the Mediterranean in my opinion. Next, keep on working. This is a Tripoli park, which we designed 15 years ago. It was built by the Turkish people in Libya, Tripoli. It was a success story. Next, create spaces that people could walk. Let people walk into the streets. Let them jog. 
let them move around. Let us design with using the vocabulary of the climatic regions that we have. And let's teach our students. Let's focus on the female part of our genders because they are the mothers and they are th the future leaders of the world, creating leaders. This is a small project. It's under, under design now in the, the southern part of Jordan, in Petra, Jordan. And all what we tried is to take waves and create spaces that could work. If you want to reach and understand how successful your projects and your cities are, look how much feedback you have on Facebook when people visit a space. And that's why the nostalgia takes me back to the matter of details I find in places, to Khan al-Khalili, to Shari' uh, al-Mu'izzi al-Din Allah al-Fatimi fil-Qahira. Those historic preservations, those places that from these 140 books, I wrote seven books about the Mediterranean and my work. The richness of making a city works, it's by respecting the people in that city and allow them to use their cultural value. Thank you all. Thank you guys for hosting us today. I didn't want to make it long, but I will give you, I think, uh, I would a special thank to Ukhti Zainab Doktoritna, Akhi Sameh, Akhi Amr, all the people in charge at this time. Thank you for this outstanding uh, uh, conference that you are doing. I hope I shed some light today on what we call as architects or leaders, how we could somehow make a difference. We only make a difference by one thing in the Arab world. We have to respect our human beings, our people, respect the people in the streets, love them, cherish them, respect the ruler parts of the Nile and the southern portion of Nile of Aswan. Let them be, stay in the fields most of the time and growing things and help them. Education and being doctors and PhD holders and masters is not the key issue. The key issue is to teach our people how to respect their families and their countries and read more, even if they have a bachelor's degree, but they have a passion with a mehne or a profession. That's more than enough. God bless Egypt. God bless the Arab world. God bless the Mediterranean. When I come to Egypt, it's not only my home. If you love Egypt, إذا بتحبوا مصر, البعض منا يعشق مصر. لأن العالم العربي تسري في دماءنا لغتكم تسري في دماءنا أنغام وكلمات وكتابات وكتب طه حسين والمنفلوطي الأزهر الشريف الأقباط في مصر تجري آثار وعلم الفراعنة أينما ارتحلنا كعرب سلام لكم سلام منكم سلام عليكم سلام لهذه الأمة التي ما استكانت لذل والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته